Hey everybody, uh, we're, I'm coming to you today with the second part of the, the video where we've been talking about the factory heated and cooled seats and using the buttons and the LEN network and how it all ties together. And, and today we're going to kind of take a focus on uh, this unit here. I'll close this down because it's kind of washing everything out there. Uh, this is the factory control module and we'll break into this and how it works with the whole system to make everything run and if you remember from the other video we talked briefly about uh, the switches talking Lynn back to the BCM the BCM then comes back and talks to this unit and this unit is uh, I don't know if you can really see down in there is hooked up to your seats and it's really, really kind of interesting. This is, this is, I've already broken one of the tabs on here, but this is one of the easiest units I've ever seen to open up. It literally pops out, and then you can pull the whole board out here so we can get a better look at what's going on here. And so you've got a, uh, looks to be an 8-pin connector over here and a 11-pin, which is kind of a weird number, 11, no, 10-pin over here. But you've got four big pins on the bottom. This is the side that's going to hook into your seats. This side goes to your BCM. Oddly enough, on this 8-pin connector, you're only using one wire on this whole thing, and that is going to be your LIN bus network. Then we've got some other stuff on here, some resistors across, a uh, capacitor of some sort. Not sure what that's being used for. Then we've got two ICs. One of these ICs, my guess is, I can't really see because these things have a rubber coating over them for... Uh, you know, protecting them. This is underneath the front of the driver's seat. Uh, so they would have, uh, and they do, they've got the writing of what the chip is and the manufacturer. Uh, I'm guessing this little one over here on the left is going to be our LEN controller, and that's what's actually going to do the communications back to the BCM, and this one is probably going to be the actual board level controller. These four uh, bigger chips over here on the side are actually FET power supplies or, or power adapters. And so the way this works is we've got 12 volts coming in on two pins on here. It comes in, runs to these power, uh, these pet, pa FET power supplies, and then the controller, which can only, you know, handle about a quarter of an amp worth of load or current on it, then cycles these, which can handle maybe two, two and a half to three amps, and the output of these is what changes between high, medium, and low. So, utilizing this, we've got a smaller chip that can't quite handle load. It would burn this up if we tried to control it directly off that. That's why we have to have these FETs on here. And, uh, as I said, I'm not sure what, the, you know, this, this thing's a little bit overcomplicated, if you ask me. I haven't really dove into it that much. Uh, if we were to go down and look even further, as I said, what I believe is the uh, the LIN controller down here, there's a good chance that somebody could tie into that thing. Most of the pins aren't being used on it. Could tie into it, say it's an Atmel chipset, and reprogram this. And instead of having this thing talk to the BCM, you could theoretically have this talk directly to your uh, switches. But that's way out there you know and that's a hypothetical and would require a lot of you know reverse engineering trying to figure things out and and uh, whether or not we'll get to that point we'll see I might get bored and dig into it might not but let's go ahead and look at what we've got and I've got the pinouts here so I don't know if you're going to be able to see these very well but on the uh, the big one, we've got on pin 1 our battery voltage, then we've got battery voltage again on pin 10. So uh, this big pin and that small pin right there, and then we've got one ground. That one of these, my guess is pin 1, the small pin is providing voltage for the rest of the control board. Uh, the big one is actually going to be the one that's controlling uh, the seat heaters on the FETs. Uh, so if you look and see, then after that, we've got the supply voltage for the passenger and driver back in, in cushion on 3, 4, 5, and 6. So these four pins across the top here. 
and that's basically it you know we're but even funnier is as said the other one here that we've got an eight pin in we're literally just tying into one network bus uh lin network bus two and so if you're using a third party uh lin controller you know pretty simple i don't know what the commands are for this yet i'm going to hook into this and see if i can get a scan off of it wake it up and get it to react uh honestly i might be biting off a little bit more than i could chew trying to trying to figure that part out but it's pretty straightforward as far as getting a control board that just has these fets on it and then it has an input a pwm input that you can use any kind of standard uh, control board that has LEN support. There's not really any Arduinos out there that I know of that, that have LEN, but a Raspberry Pi, you could probably get that to, to work because it's got a, a, you know, you can find those with different UARTs on them and things like that. Um, or even more simple is if you weren't too concerned about having the different levels, you could just tie it to a, a relay control card. So. That's kind of the, the short and nasty about how this works. Uh, I'm going to dive into it a little bit more, see if I can get this thing talking uh, and run a controller as an intermediary because honestly, this is a cheap part. Uh, I want to say I snagged this one off of eBay for 20 bucks. Uh, so if it would be possible to make the factory switches work with the factory control module, obviously for retrofitting the, uh, the seats, that would be the way to go. This doesn't have anything to do with the cooling system. The cooling system is completely different. As I said, the fans on the cooling system are controlled by uh, the blowers, are controlled by the BCM. As far as I've noticed directly, the, the cooling elements, uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. I haven't really looked into that that much yet. So uh, pretty straightforward. You know, Maybe we can make something work out of this. If not, I've got some FET controllers on the way. Uh, unfortunately, my elements are uh, 5.5 uh, ohm resistance, and so that's a little bit higher than the FETs that I bought, so I'm probably going to burn them out trying to make them work, but I'm going to do it anyways just to, just to prove that it can be done. 5.5 uh, ohms, I think it, at uh, half power for low, you're, you're looking... Uh, at uh, a little less than one amp but at full power for high your amperage is going to be around uh, three amps and, and uh, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see what the resistance is on the factory elements because these little bastards probably shouldn't be good for more than about two amps and uh, so if you've got an aftermarket element that's that's running about three amps it's going to run quite a bit uh, hotter and uh, I think that's about it uh, as usual thanks for for tuning in and, and if, if you think of anything else you want me to look into let me know I'm going to I've got a uh, factory uh, HVAC control module the non automatic temperature control unit and the uh, non automatic temperature control cluster the ones that I pulled out whenever I did the automatic temperature control uh, retrofit on my regular cab uh, I'm thinking about tearing those apart seeing how they work and, and posting up some information I don't know if that side of it necessarily will be interesting to very many people uh, but you know I've got them sitting around might as well figure out what's going on with them so uh, stay tuned as usual and, and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions thanks